Hey everyone, welcome back to Cool Stuff Etc. My name is Riley, and today I have a very fun video for you, or hopefully it will be fun. I think it's gonna be fun. And uh, I'm going to regale you <laughs> with the uh, long and sordid history of how I got into death metal. Um, I think people who aren't into metal kind of see it as a genre that is especially hard to penetrate more so than hip hop or, or rock or, or pop music in general. Um, and, and that's fair, it is, it is not for everybody, um, but I think that there's something for everyone to enjoy if you look hard enough. Um, and so uh, just because of that and also because I you know, love metal, uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about how I got into it and kind of give some recommendations for people who are looking um, and might want to follow it. my footsteps, you know, my my terrible, awful footsteps. Um, so, I, you know, that, that, that question I come back to is, what kind of a person seeks out this sort of like dark, kind of morbid art? And I guess the answer is somebody with a uh, long fascination with death and morbid shit. Um, <laughs> so, you know, as a child, I um, was often uh, interested in weird stuff. Um, you know, it started with Goosebumps and a series of unfortunate events to young adult novel uh, series that I believe is, uh, is, is quite often to blame <laughs> for people like myself. And then, you know, early middle school, late elementary is when I started reading Stephen King. Um, and that's also to blame. <laughs> um, and, and then also just generally I was like drawing really violent, <laughs> like really terrible shit. <laughs> Even at a young age, I was drawing people like getting their heads chopped off and, and like blood spraying everywhere. Like it's a fucking like old samurai film. Um, <laughs> and then, so, you know, and then as I got older, I kind of, punk rock was kind of like a gateway. I also had listened to lots of classic rock um, and, and some heavy metal, some thrash like Metallica, um, you know, because of my dad. And so I had a little bit of, of, um, of uh, interest in that sort of thing um, from that young age. And, uh, and I just kind of went from there. And then I would say that I had known about death metal um, for a long period of time, um, you know, it, 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 my dad always told me about, like, the Cookie Monster vocals and, and, you know, tried to be funny. He was, you know, he kind of had a vaguely, uh, like, sideline understanding of what death metal was, and still, he still kind of does. I don't really talk to him about it that much, but, uh, um, so, you know, I kind of knew about it here and there, but wasn't ever brave enough, honestly, to, to get into it. Um, I do remember, like, being scared <laughs> of um of that kind of music when i was younger even like even just like metalcore like really like now that i look back like bring me the horizon and like that kind of stuff is like very corny i mean i still like some of that stuff um in like a corny way but uh you know <laughs> so um that even that was scary to me at the time and and looking back now at kind of the stuff that i have in this big stack of cds off camera that you can't see um you know, it, it's funny to like look at the stuff that I listen to currently and then think back to how I was so scared of that <laughs> in the past. Um, but yeah, let's get into it. Talk a little bit more about, more specifically, my first like brushes with this. So the two memories that stick out the most to me are seeing the cover for this album, Leprosy by Death, uh, in an Anthony Fantano video. Um, and I, I don't know, I just, I, the logo stuck out to me, the coloring, like pink, it seemed odd that a death metal band would have this very pink um, album cover. Uh, and again, I wasn't brave enough to listen to this. I, I, I did not listen to this for many, many years after seeing it, um, but it stuck with me for sure. And I also now think that it's kind of odd this is the one he chose to, to share in, in a video. I don't remember what the video was or, or anything like that, but... I just think this is such a funny like death album to choose. Like you, you know, most people choose Scream, Bloody Gore, or or uh, or Human, or Symbolic, or something like that. Kind of their you know more popular albums. But but uh, I mean, this is a great album still, of course. But um, you know, that was my kind of my first little impression. And then the other kind of metal adjacent impression that I had was I was a big fan of the Mountain Goats. And if you're a Mountain Goats fan, you know that they have a song off this album 
uh, called The Best Ever Death Metal Band in Denton. This is not a death metal song, but this is a song about a death metal band. Um, and that was also another kind of interesting like reference in this like kind of acoustic uh, indie folk album, to re a reference to death metal. Um, and then, you know, reading into the lyrics and reading interviews from John Darnielle about um, about his passion for Cannibal Corpse and, and, and black metal too, and, and death metal. Um, I was like, wow, nerds like me can like this stuff. And it, it is in fact that nerds are metalheads. Every metalhead in the entire world is a, is a huge nerd. Um, there's no exception. Uh, even the most douchiest bro is like a nerd just for liking this stuff. Um, so, and then after that, in late or mid to late 2017, is when I listened to the very first death metal album that I had ever listened to front to back. And that album I think I've mentioned before is this one, uh, Blood Offerings by Necrot. Um, and this album still rips. This is still a ripper, of course. Necrot are a great band. Um, and where I, I, I don't know what, aside from the cool album art, I'm not sure what drew me into this what made me want to listen to this, to, 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 uh, to put it on and listen to it front to back. Um, I, I, it was on this, I don't remember if anyone remembers this app, but there's an app that was quite like um, Instagram uh, called Symbol, and you uh, could share you know songs. And someone that I followed shared a song off of this album. And I, I don't, yeah, like I said, the, the cover struck me and I went and listened to it. And that was the first album I listen to, it's kind of unorthodox because most people start with the next album that I listen to, uh, like this, Scream Bloody Gore by Death with the cool um, like embossed cover and the shininess here. Um, and this is of course a very, very, very classic uh, early death metal. Um, you know, this is often cited as one of the very first death metal albums of all time. Um, along with Seven Churches by Possessed, which I never got into as much. I, I listened to it, but it wasn't like, uh, it's not going to be on this list uh, since I haven't, um, I don't know, I just don't consider it to be a reason that I got into death metal. There's a uh, good old Chuck, Chuck Schuldiner, uh, R.I.P., of course. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, this, this is a very different beast than this. Um, even a different beast, in my opinion, than this, which is their second album, and this is their first album. Um, you know, it's, it's got the blueprint down, but it's still very much, it's not like, it's not thrash, but it's not quite death metal as it would become. Um, but it is old school death metal, and so, you know, it is. It's, that's why it's so hard to categorize some of these albums is, you know, it's, it's like, it's like Celtic Frost, like, that kind of a band, like, you don't, it's hard to say what genre they fall into neatly because they don't fall into one very neatly. They have elements of thrash. They have elements of, of uh, first wave black metal. They have elements of death metal. They have uh, other, other, other elements that I'm like really gothic metal and that kind of thing. So it's like, you know, the it, this death is kind of a band that defies categorization in a lot of ways, not quite as much as Celtic Frost, but, um, and then from there, uh, it kind of just, I was reading through my old records and stuff. Um, not like, not like vinyl records, like my, like physical, like my, like non-physical, digital <laughs> typed records. <laughs> um, and so all the albums you're going to see on this list were at one point recommended to me, um, or, or at the very, or most of them, I should say, recommended to me by two main, um, YouTube guys that talk about metal, that being Scourge of Vinyl, uh, and Brain Smasher. Um, Scourge of Vinyl doesn't post any more videos very frequently. Um, I do follow him on Instagram. Brain Smasher still is up and running, and, and I still enjoy his content, and uh, I, I love hearing about his... He has a very... He has, like, an encyclopedic history um, in his brain of, like, all these bands um, in, in, a, in a variety of genres, not just death metal, but but black metal and, um, and traditional heavy metal, doom metal, weirdo shit that's going on. Um, he's great. I highly recommend if you're looking for someone to... to, uh, to watch about with with in regards to this kind of uh content you should definitely check them out um but like i said this is all going to be albums that were recommended to me by people like this these two people oh, there was others of course but um can't think of anyone <laughs> off the top of my head so 
Um, all right, this is a big stack. I'm not gonna spend forever talking about these, so don't worry. Um, suffocation, FAG of the Forgotten. This is a classic. Most, a lot of these are gonna be classics. Um, you know, I started with the classics as, as you do, uh, as everyone should, I believe, because you need to have a, a, a good foundation um, of what you know, or like of uh, your understanding of the genre and all that good stuff. Uh, yeah, I mean, so many good songs. Liege, Liege of Inferacity, Effigy of the Forgotten, Infecting the Crypts, uh, Mass Obliteration, every, it, banger, 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 back to back to back. Um, yeah, this is a great band. New York Brutal Death Metal. This is my first foray into Brutal slash Technical Death Metal, and uh, or Slam, as you might say, um, and it's great. And then kind of jumping off the heels of that, this is kind of another Anthony Fantano thing. Um, he reviewed their their newest album, Wrong One to Fuck With. Um, and I didn't listen to that one, but I listened to this one. I do have that one on the on the uh, shelf, but I listened to this one instead. This is Reign Supreme by Dying Fetus. Um, and uh, this is like, this is like suffocation, but the production is a lot more modern. Um, I won't say better but it is a lot more modern. And the lyrically there, you know, suffocation is actually some very interesting lyrics, um, like philosophically. Lyrically, these guys are just kind of like, you know, very, uh, like songs like subjected to a beating, <laughs> from womb to waste, um, you know, that kind of stuff. So it's very like violent and, and, and kind of transgressive, uh, you know, kind of that kind of stuff. But yeah, great songs on here. Kind of catchy, actually. There's a lot of catchy tunes on here. You can definitely uh, catch me singing along, which is not a common thing with death metal. So, um, and then following that, Star Spawn by Blood Incantation. Um, this is kind of like weirdo cosmic death metal. Um, kind of, it's funny because it, it, I would say that it's kind of hard to uh, to penetrate a little bit like it's, it's spacey and it's kind of got weird uh, time signatures and riffs and like, it, you know, there's songs here that are like 13 minutes long or one song is 13 minutes long. Um, and yeah, just, just like really weirdo stuff, but it, it's still, I, I would I would say that beginners, you know, once you start with a couple other other uh, forays into death metal, this this is actually not a bad place to continue. Um, it, it, it'll, you'll learn a lot about what death metal can be and has become. You know, as there is, this is more of a modern band, even though a lot of people classify them as like old school death metal revival. Um, but they're more than that. They're great, and they're still rocking to this day. Um, I can't wait for the next full length. I actually, I actually know I I haven't listened to Time Wave Zero, but that's more of an ambient release. Um, so it's not really a death metal release. But and then following that, Severed Survival by Autopsy. This is more akin to early death. This is 1989. It says on the back which is like still death metal in the kind of the nascent stages. This is their debut album. And yeah, there's some great songs on here. Uh, Charred Remains, Disembowel, Ridden with Disease, um, In the Grip of Winter is a bonus track. Critical Madness 2 is great. Um, yeah, there's some great songs. And this is kind of just like very, very straightforward uh, death metal. Like you're not gonna get anything super hyper complicated. A little bit doomy at times, but like, yeah, this is like as this is as like meat and potatoes as it gets in my opinion. Um, following that, Symphonies of Sickness by Carcass. And God, I hate this stupid, awful censored cover. But I don't know where to get the non-censored cover, so it's fine. You can kind of see it on the back a little. Well, technically, this is like a censored cover, but you know what I mean. Um, this is like a dude's head shotgunned off or something. It's pretty cool. Um, <laughs> Carcass is a great British death metal band. Started out kind of more as a gore grind, grindcore, one of the progenitors of that genre. Um, and this is more akin to death metal. Their, their release after this, Necroticism, uh, Necroticism, excuse me, is probably one of my favorite death metal albums, uh, period. But this is the one that kind of got me into their sound. Um, and you can go back and listen to Reek of Future Faction if you want to, but I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, 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 it's an acquired taste. If you like it, you like it. That's fine. I like it. It's fine. But it's not like, I don't, I, I'm not like listening to it very often. <laughs> um, another classic band, Morbid Angel with Altars of Madness. Um, whew, these guys are good and they are quite prolific. They have several, several, several albums. Sorry, I can't speak. Um, that are all just like, and, and they're very different albums too. Like this album, if you listen to this album and then listen to their third album, Covenant, you you are not gonna 
think they're the same band, if I'm being honest. They're very different. And then if you go from Covenant to, like, Formula's Fatal to the Flesh, that's, like, an additional, like, step to take from one band to the next. Like, it, it, it's kind of crazy how, how much ground they covered in their career. Um, but they're, you know, Florida death metal. If you, if you know anything about death metal in the early stages, there was two main scenes, and that is kind of Florida and uh, Sweden, Stockholm. And we'll get to some of those Stockholm bands um, and, and other Florida bands, too. Um, New York had a death metal scene, of course, too, but Florida was kind of where a lot of bands went to record and, and stuff. Um, you'll, you'll hear about more sound records and, and that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, this is this is great. This is kind of like, in a lot of ways, um, the precursor to, to a band like Blood Incantation. Um, the, you know, the guy from Blood Incantation has said that Morbid Angel is a huge influence on them, and it's very plain to see. Um, and yeah, these guys are, are, are very weird. This is a very unique sounding album. It has kind of a lot of, um, I, I always thought that they had a lot of like traditional heavy metal riffs that were kind of deathified. So if you listen to a song like Suffocation or, um, or Chapel of Ghouls, um, there's a lot of, I don't know, there's just a lot of like melodic riffs on there that you wouldn't find in other bands of this era. I, I, I think. Um, and so, you know, that, that's the classic for a reason, of course. Uh, following that, this is Opeth with Orchid. This is their debut album, and they are a progressive death metal band, so you're going to get all kinds of acoustic uh, passages, folk instrumentation on this in between the, you know, deathier moments. But even in the deathier moments, you know, there's a lot of um, interesting stuff going on. There's, there's uh, melody, harmony, uh, disharmony, and the songs are quite long and have very poetic lyrics. And, you know, as you can tell from the cover and from the back, this is a band that takes themselves a little seriously. Whereas I would say other death metal bands are not taking, it's, you know, tongue, tongue in cheek more, more or less. But that's a great, great album. It's probably my favorite Opeth album. I'm not like crazy, crazy about their later stuff, but it's still good. Um, you know, it's good enough, I should say. Uh, hopefully I don't get like age well, I'm age restricted I don't care about but like hopefully I don't get like uh removed or whatever for showing this album cover but um Butchered at Birth <laughs> My Cannibal Corpse this is you know they're they're a classic band and, and everyone at some point if you listen to Death Metal you listen to Cannibal Corpse um and this this is their second release and it is very good it is also a, to me a weird moment in their in their discography as um, their first album is, to me, more of a thrashy, um, death metal adjacent album. And this is just like total discordance. Um, it, it's, it's really, really uh, hard to listen to, honestly. Like, it, the riffs are, are there, but they're just like, it, you know, I, I can't even think of the word to describe it. Um, but then you listen to like Tomb of the Mutilated and, and the Bleeding especially, and, and there's more song structure, there's more uh, hooks, and, and other and other you know parts to latch onto where this is just kind of like crazy off the wall like they're they're trying a little bit of everything um and it's really it's really you know sorry I don't want to use this word but it's really brutal um <laughs> as the cover art might might uh tell you so um yeah this is a great release I would I would recommend starting um if you're gonna start with any band Cannibal Corpse is probably a good place to start but it's to me they're they're not like better than than a lot of other uh classic bands um they're still great of course but you know um this is another album this is kind of a weird pick i guess because it's not it's not a classic this is more of a modern um album but i i listened to this band faceless burial i believe they're from austria i always forget if they're austria or australia um the the, the their label blood harvest is definitely austrian but yeah this is a great release this is like kind of like dirgy um, um, filthy sort of death metal, um, <coughs> excuse me, and it's been a minute since I've listened to this band. They have a new album out, and apparently it's very good, and I, I need to listen to it. I have their other albums on the shelf, um, and their EP as well. Um, I think what drew, drew me to this, this band is probably their logo. I just thought it was really cool, and, um, I mean, of course, the album cover is kind of weird and abstract, and, and the music is that way, too. And then listening to it, there, I feel like there actually is a story going on here um, with these songs about, um, about this, this demonic entity 
um, impregnating someone and using them to to um, to to uh, like birth their seed um, and and kind of like bring destruction to the world or whatever. It's kind of an interesting take. And this is not confirmed. This is just speculation on my part. But you know, uh, it's pretty cool. This is my first foray into Death Doom, and this is Spectral Voice, Eroded Corridors of Unbeing. There's members of Blood Incantation in this band, and if you listen to it, you'll definitely hear a little bit of that. Um, but this is great. This is very, very slow, um, doomy parts, but the death metal is definitely there. Um, and, oh, I, I don't know. This, this is a great release. I, I really... Highly, highly, highly recommend. After you listen to a little bit of death metal, you listen to this band, this album specifically. They haven't released anything else aside from um, an EP ahead of time, which or ahead of this, I should say, which I'm not like crazy about, but it's still good. Uh, I'm gonna try to speed this along because I've been talking for too long. Uh, horrendous on Arita, on Arita. As you can see, I'm getting into the more modern stuff. So after I listened to a lot of early stuff, I started to listen to. Uh, uh, bands that were big in the scene at the time, you know, in 2018 or whatever. Um, and Horrendous is another progressive death metal band, kind of in the style of later era death. Um, and yeah, they're great. Uh, the, the hardest thing that people are going to have to get, get into this band, the biggest hurdle you're going to have is probably the vocals. And I, I think that's true for most people getting in, into death metal. You know, you always hear people talk about like not being able to understand them and, and just like not getting why they have to, to do that. And, and it's, it's just an aesthetic choice. Um, I, I often like to think of, of the voice as texture to add um, on top of things because I'm really not listening to the lyrics a lot of the time. Um, but this, this vocalist has a very, uh, I, I want to say raspy, but it's not even raspy. Like it, it, it's beyond that. It's, <laughs> I, I can't even imitate it. Um, uh, so that's probably going to be the biggest hurdle, but but if you get past that, the music on here is phenomenally written, uh, very, very well performed. These guys are like students at some uh, college somewhere, and, and music students, I should say, and very, very talented individuals, and they're, uh, all, all their albums are great. All of their albums are great. They're all classics, I would say, modern classics, um, and so I highly recommend them. And I also highly, highly recommend Two Mold Manor of Infinite Forms to be Frank, I, I recommend all of these albums because I'm talking about them, but um, this is Two Mold. This is probably like prototypical old school death metal revival. This is, if you took a band like Morbid Angel or uh, or like Cannibal Corpse even, uh, and you brought them into the modern era, this is what they would sound like. And this is great. Um, the label 20 Buck Spin is a great place to look if you're looking for awesome bands. Uh, bands like Superstition, Witch Vomit, um, oh, who else? Uh, Aswarium. Asw oh, I never said it before out loud. Aswarium. I think I can't, I'm not gonna find it. <laughs> it's on there. Um, but yeah, in this band, of course, Two Mold is great. All their albums are phenomenal. Um, and I actually, funny and funny story, I, um, I know someone, uh, who is dating the guy who did the cover art for their third album. Um, so like degrees of separation there are pretty cool. Uh, I think, I don't know, it, it's kind of probably lame to, to brag about, but it's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, like I said, this is, this is old school death metal revival done in one of the best ways you could do it. And if you're a fan of, um, Dark Souls or, or, um, uh, Bloodborne, their lyrics on here are related to that. Songs like Abyss Walker in the Chamber of Sacred Uthika. Um, those are blood, those are Dark Souls, I mean, uh, references, so. Yes, now we are getting into Human by Death. Uh, this is when Death went prog. You could say spiritual healing was kind of the beginning of that, but this is really, really when they went uh, kind of off the wall. Um, and yeah, every song in here is amazing. This is my favorite Death album, for sure. Um, I, I have, I think I've shared before that I have the back patch for this band, uh, for this album, I mean, um, and yeah, damn, I mean, this is, you cannot go wrong with this. You can't go wrong with death, really, in general. Individual thought patterns is fine, but the, everything else is great. Um, ooh, ghoul, we came for the dead. This is very, very silly, um, dumb fun. The guitar tone on this is awful in the best way possible. Um, and Ghoul, if you don't know, is a high-concept, lowbrow band 
that the members, of course, dress as their, um, as these ghoul, ghoul Sylvanians, I think they're called. And they, all the albums are kind of like, uh, like very well themed and kind of sometimes telling a story or, or you see, um, uh, lyrics and, and, and ideas cropping up here and there. Um, and so you have, you have members of the band Digestor, Cremator, and For Fermentor. And they all share kind of vocal duties and stuff, and they all have their own unique uh, uh, vocal stylings. And it's just very fun, it's stupid horror movie slasher stuff. Um, and yeah, they're great. Oh, sorry, Ghoul Sylvanians. Creep Sylvanians. I'm the worst fan in the world. Obviously, it's Creep Sylvanians. Um, this is their first album, and later they get a bit thrashier. They're, they're, they're definitely having more fun with later on in their career, where this is kind of like... Still, I would say a little dark and, and hard to get into if you're new to the genre, but this is a, honestly a good place to start if you're not going to start with a classic band. I would, I would recommend Ghouls. Scorched Ecliptic Butchery. Uh, this is like, as you might guess, um, like alien abduction kind of themed. Um, and yeah, I, it, this is also really good. This is another 20 bucks spin release. So I, I don't know if they've released anything since this, but if they have, I, I've been missing out on it. Um, and prepare yourselves for the best uh, <laughs> back album cover of all time. Um, I'm assuming this is the vocalist or something, but I this is so amazing. I love that shit so much. Um, this is just, yeah, this is another great example of like modern old school death metal revival uh, done really, really right. This band just gets it. Um, if you were going to listen to a couple songs from here, Blood Splatter Eclipse. Bodies Collect, Mortuary of Nightmares, and uh, Barbarous in Experimentation are great places to start. Uh, oh, Disfiguring Operations, too, is a great song. Um, yeah, can't go wrong with that that album, for sure. The next ones are Two Piece, and that is, um, firstly, Black Dahlia Murder Nocturnal, and um, Black, Dahlia, Black Dahlia Murder Unhallowed. And this is a melodic, melodic death metal band from Detroit, um, and they're, they're very, very talented songwriters. Some of their stuff can sound a little samey, which I think a lot is true for a lot of, not just melodic death metal, but also death metal in general. Sometimes bands can, uh, kind of like do the same thing over and over again. And it's kind of, kind of gets a little samey, but these two albums are to me, their their best. Um, I think I might prefer this over this, but I'm not sure. Um, so this is Nocturnal and this is Unhallowed and you know, it's interesting because I think most people would think that melodic death metal is a great place to start, um, but I kind of disagree. Um, I think that throwing yourself into the deep end with the, those classic bands or kind of like really weirdo oddball shit is actually a better place to start than this because I feel like if you start with this, you're kind of only getting, not, you're not getting the full picture. Um, although, although I will say this band is more death metal than a lot of other melodic death metal bands like you know like at the gates or, or like in flames or something um but yeah i don't know i i it, this is not something i would recommend first off for somebody um I, I don't think at least so but i mean of course still great great albums i love this band i have all of their cds um and it is it is a shame about uh their lead singer but uh they're they're, they're not going away apparently so you know uh, speaking of um, oddball shit, this is Immolation with Here and After. Immolation are a very, to me, unique band. Um, nobody writes songs and riffs and uh, uh, vocal um, passages like this band does. Um, this is very, very, this is one of those bands that are very, very blasphemous and like, it's kind of corny, like how atheist they are sometimes, but um, they're great. I mean, yeah, like I said, nobody writes riffs like these guys. They have a style all their own. Immolation is a band that you, if you listen to and you enjoy death metal, you are not going to forget about them. You're going to be listening to them for a long, long, long time. So, um, Immolation, highly recommended. Um, let's see, I only have five left. Sorry, it's taking such a long time. Uh, don't really start my computer, please. All right. Uh, Venom Prison, Animus. This is kind of hardcore and death metal. You could say deathcore if you want. Um, I don't consider them deathcore because they don't sound like suicide silence. They sound like Ben in prison. 
Um, and they are from the UK. And yeah, they are they are writing hardcore inflected death metal, I would say, more so than death metal inflected hardcore. And I know that's kind of a very, very particular distinction to make, and I'm kind of a lame idiot loser douchebag for having to make that distinction but it's important it's an important distinction i i very strongly believe that um that if you listen to this band and then listen to to oh, i can't even think of a death the deathcore band what what the hell a suicide silence i guess i'll say or, or like job for a cowboy or something this is not they're different bands they are just different bands and this is a great great band i highly recommend all of their releases and I swear by them, I, I, I promise you, you will not be steered wrong, but they are phenomenal. This is another twofer, uh, Bolt Thrower. This is their first album, Realm of Chaos. And this is when they were kind of like very clearly uh, uh, Warhammer inspired, as you can see on the, on the cover. There's some space marines there. Um, and then uh, the reason I this is a twofer is that this isn't really an album that I would say got me into death metal, but I wanted to include it because I think Warmaster is probably the better release. This is their second album. Um, I think this album is still worth listening to, but this album is what I would say got me into Bolt Thrower and uh, makes me come back and listen to this. This is probably the album I listen to the most aside from maybe Fourth Crusade or something. So um, yeah, Bolt Thrower is a, is a band that you don't want to skip over. Um, I, I, don't, I think that of the classic death metal bands, they are often... Um, lauded as being one of the best but also I, I feel like they might not get their due totally um so uh you know don't don't skip over them uh here we have deicides self-titled debut um and this is another band that do not miss out on this release especially um they're out the second and third albums uh legion and once upon a cross are also very very good um if you can get past the uh, this is worse than immolation in terms of like the like very atheist like blasphemy um, kind of thing. But if you can get past that, if you can get past the fact that lead singer brandishes an upside down cross into his forehead when he performs, <laughs> then um, you're in for a ride. This is like balls to the wall, crazy flirty and death metal. Um, and I, yeah, nothing I, nothing I can say can prepare you for this if you are not into death metal. This is crazy stuff. This is stuff you have to listen to. If you, oh, I should say, if you wanted to start somewhere, uh, Sacrificial Suicide, Dead by Dawn, the, the title track, Deicide, um, and probably Lun Lunatic of God's Creation as well are, are, are like good places to start, get a good idea of what you're going to hear um, on this release. Uh, so yeah, Deicide is another like classic staple band. Um, their later stuff gets a bit more generic and, and kind of like samey, but, but this is a great place to start for Deicide. And then finally, I have kind of another weirdo pick. This is Deceased, um, As the Weird Travel On. And, you know, I, I think the reason that I have this um, above something like Fearless Undead Machines is because this is the first Deceased album I listened to. And um, and I, I bought it because it was on sale from this random website. I don't remember who it was from. Um, and I was like, you know, I haven't listened to Deceased before. I know this is like their mid-2000s album and... And it might not be indicative of their sound totally, but I, I wanted to give it a chance, and it's actually great. This is not just straight-up death metal. This is kind of like, uh, I would say it's very, very inspired by traditional heavy metal, and they kind of infuse it with death metal. Um, and, you know, it's also like horror-themed. They have references to to different um, kinds of movies and stuff, and, and kind of they kind of just tell horror stories through their songs, which kind of range from a, from being like four minutes long to like up to eight or seven or eight minutes long. Um, but this is also, I would say, a great place to start, even though it it is more melodic and it isn't entirely representative of the genre. But this is still a great album, and this is a great band. If you were going to listen to Deceased, I would say this one or Fearless Undead Machines are great places to start. And I unfortunately do not have that on CD, but I'm working on remedying that. So, so here's my big old stack of CDs. It reaches up to my shoulder from the table down here. Um, yeah, this is the longest video I've done. I, I didn't intend for it to be that way, but nevertheless, I, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I definitely enjoyed talking to myself, uh, about this kind of stuff and kind of reliving old memories. It makes me want to re-listen to the, all this stuff. 
um, again, and I probably will in the next coming weeks and whatnot. We'll see. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching. I uh, hope you got something out of this. I would love to talk death metal in the comments um, with anyone if you have recommendations or if I forgot a band. I know I did forget like Incantation, but I haven't really listened to Incantation that much. Um, but yeah, other stuff too. Uh, and, and maybe I'll do this more with other genres. Maybe I'll talk about punk or, 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 uh, or black metal um, or what have you. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, I think I said that 10,000 times. Uh, but really, genuinely, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed yourself, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Take care.